All right, guys, so what do we have going on here? Well, again, if you've seen some of my previous videos, what we have is the iGUS Rebel. It's a six axis robotic arm from a company called iGUS who specializes in low cost automation and motion plastics. What you're seeing is all six joints being controlled over a CAN bus that's connected to a Raspberry Pi, all controlled via JavaScript. In previous videos, I've shown some software that I use to control the uh, AR4 robot. And the AR4 robot is another open source robot that was made by a guy named Chris Annan. Now that robot was pretty cool, did some cool stuff with it, but it uh, wasn't close enough to uh, production ready as something like this is. What makes this arm super cool is it's got uh, encoders in there. Not that the AR does not have encoders, but this one actually has absolute encoders. Now why is it important that this has absolute encoders? Well, because this has absolute encoders, it allows it such that when I boot this thing up, it could be in any orientation. I could stop it right now in its current orientation. And when I boot it back up, it knows exactly where it is. So I can tell it, oh, please go to zero, go to home, and I don't have to home anything. Um, it really helps with having those absolute encoders. Another thing is these joints are more powerful. So this thing can actually do things like maybe push one of these valves um, that I want to use to dispense some sort of liquids to make maybe drinks, uh, where the other one isn't necessarily as powerful. So it's stronger and it's more absolute. Uh, again, this uses the same control interface. So there's a control interface that's completely web-based. iGUS has some software that you can use, you download, it's a Windows-based software, it's free. Uh, but I wanted to A, stick with the trend of the channel, and B, use the open source web-based control software to control this arm, just like I did the AR robot. You can see it's moving around pretty smoothly. Um, it's moving around pretty fast. I have this running at the maximum speed that they recommend running it, which is 45 degrees per second. Another thing to note is that I have all of these joints such that they move at the same time. Now, what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is if you notice the motions in the robot, all of the motors stop at about the same time. And that makes it so that it, the robot almost looks a little bit more fluid as it moves. Another important thing to note is I have acceleration and deceleration enabled. So these joints aren't just turning on and going to their location and stopping instantaneously. They're ramping up speed, getting to full speed, and then slowing down. So the combination of that acceleration and deceleration with the motors all ending at the same time makes it so that the robot has some pretty nice, good looking, smooth movements. Um, some things I want to do in the future is to add, um, it stopped. We're going to go take a look at why it stopped. All right, so as I was doing that, my computer screen uh, went dead because uh, my computer went to sleep. Now, the commands that I'm sending the robot are actually getting sent from the browser. So when the computer went to sleep, I believe it stopped sending the commands. So this is a good opportunity to actually show you guys um, a scenario where I had to basically stop the robot where it currently was, and that's in this position. And I'm going to restart the software zero and enable all the motors and send that back to zero. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the software. So what you're seeing here is I'm actually running this on a Raspberry Pi. I'm going to go ahead and boot the software up. When I boot the software up, you can see on the left side of the screen that it reconnected to robot one, and then it outputs some information about the robot. The first, it's outputting some information about the limits of the joints individually, whether or not they have certain offsets from zero, and whether or not I flipped the orientation of the joint. Um, such that negative is positive. In addition, it said it created all the motors. It said how uh, far away from true zero it currently is from the absolute position zero, and it's ready to go. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and clear that, and I'm going to go ahead over to this screen, and I'm going to reset all of the joints. You notice that all of a sudden you see that the referenced and aligned flags got set to green because when you reset, we start sending position commands to those motors and they let us know whether or not they're referenced. We can also see their current position and we set the goal position to where the current position is. Once we do that, we're going to go ahead and we're going to hit enable, which is going to enable all the motors. If you look at the output on the right here, you can see that each motor is being reset and then enabled. Um, with a one second delay just to give everything time to sync up. So now that all of the uh, motors are enabled, I can go ahead and open up the waypoints 
and go ahead and click on Run Waypoints. So when I do this, I'm actually going to do it and then split the screen. So what you're seeing here is some output from the uh, software running on the Raspberry Pi on the right, and on the left is the control interface. Notice how at the end of every motion, there's a log that happens that says uh, that the all motors have moved, meaning the robot has finished the motion that it was told to do. When all the motors have reported that they're done moving, then the next command is sent down from the control software to the robot, and the robot starts to move. And now it's actually taking over and going back to where it left off because my software um, is still executing those positions. Um, so it should actually continue to do what it was doing prior to my computer going to sleep over there. Um, the same thing would have been true if I smashed the e-stop. There's an e-stop on my software. If I did that, the robot would have stopped as well and I would have been able to pick up where I left off. So that's a little bit of an update on the project. I hope you guys enjoy this. Um, hopefully I get this thing maybe making some drinks cool soon and doing some other cool stuff. Um, and, you know, subscribe to the channel, like the video, and I'll see you guys in the next video.